Crinkle Roots Guide to Knowing Animal Habitats by Jim Arnowski. Hello, my name is Crinkle Root. I'm an explorer and a wildlife finder. I found so many wild creatures sharing this sweet earth, I lost count somewhere around a billion. I see so many wild critters because I know where they all live. The natural places where wild animals live are called habitats. I'm going to visit lots of different wildlife habitats. You can come to the three things wildlife need to survive are food, a cover or shelter, and water. If you find all three, you will find wildlife. The first place I want to show you is a watery place or a wetland. A wetland is any place where water is near, at, or just above the surface of the ground. You may have a tiny wetland in your own backyard where the soil is always moist and the grass grows more lush. The three most common wetlands are marshes, swamps, and bogs. A marsh is full of tall grasses, cattails, and reeds. Here, water is above ground in many spots. A swamp is a place where many wooded plants grow and water covers nearly all the land. A bog is a place where the land actually floats on water. The shallow water of any wetland is a world of plants, rocks, sand, and sunken trees. It is a rich, weedy habitat for underwater wildlife. In a woodland, tree trunks, stems, and branches crisscross and overlap. It takes sharp eyes to pick out even the noisiest creatures like hammering woodpeckers or chirping red squirrels. But make no mistake, any woodland is a habitat for a variety of wildlife. For every animal you hear or see, there are many more hiding. In the woods, animals may be living high or in the treetops, in middle branches or trunks or on the woodland floor. See if you can find the wildlife living in this little patch of woods. Climb aboard my old jalopy. There are some interesting places I want to show you that are miles apart. Along the way, we're sure to spot some wildlife near the road. Rabbits, deer, woodchuck, and other normally shy animals come out to the roadsides to feed on lush green plants growing in the open sunlight. Roadsides are also hunting grounds for hungry crows, hawks, and kestrels. Our first stop is a farmer's cornfield. Cornfields provide an ever-changing habitat for wildlife. In the spring, gulls, swallows, and bluebirds feed on beetles, grubs, and earthworms underneath the unearthed by the farmer's plow. By midsummer, when the corn stalks have grown high enough to provide cover, small animals move into the nest and raise their young. At ripening time, the cornfield becomes a supermarket for raiding raccoons. By late fall, after the field of corn has been freshly cut and harvested, the scattered kernels are a feast for migrating geese. From small hillside meadow to vast rolling plains, Grasslands are wide open spaces where wildlife can thrive. At first glance, grasslands look void of anything but waving green stems. But take a look, a good look, and you will discover something wonderful. Wherever the road leads, you will find wildlife living there. Even the hottest, driest places can be home to animals. In the dry lands, wildlife find cover behind sagebrush and cactus, beneath rock ledges, or for some, simply by digging in and covering up with sand. Succulent plants provide both food and water, and for predators, there is prey. Here is a sampling of the many wildlife species that inhabit drylands from sagebrush country to desert sands. Learn to recognize the different wildlife habitats from lowlands to mountains, wetlands to drylands. Don't be fooled by how small a place may be. Some wild critters get by in surprisingly little space, a bit of brush, a swampy puddle, 
a pile of rocks, a tiny woodlot, or a lone cactus. Well now, I told you we'd cover a lot of territory and we did. I counted over 80 different wildlife species on our trip. How many did you count? I hope you enjoyed the journey. I did. So did Sassafras. She always likes riding in the old jalopy. We'll see you soon. Until then, remember, wherever you go, you share the world with wildlife.